As always, if you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. Before we solve the question, it's going to be useful to review a couple of concepts related to electric fields that are produced by positive and negative charges. So we'll first go ahead and just draw a positive and a negative charge. And what we want to review is that positive charges produce electric fields that point away from the positive charge. So for example, if we imagine a location right about here and we wanted to know the direction of the electric field produced by that positive charge, we would simply point a vector away from the positive charge. And so this would be our electric field direction. On the other hand, negative charges produce electric fields that point towards the negative charge. So if we were located at this point right here, the electric field would be pointing towards the negative charge. And we can label that E as well. So with those ideas in mind, we can turn to the picture and examine specifically the point that's labeled P. And it might be helpful to label the charges as either being positive or negative. We can see from the given information that both Q1 and Q2, as well as Q3, are positively charged. So we could put little plus signs on those three charges. And then, of course, Q4 is negatively charged. After doing that, we can draw the direction of the electric field lines that are produced by these four charges. We'll start with charge Q1, which is positive, and as stated earlier, with a positive charge, we should point an electric field line away from that positive charge. So what we'll do is carefully draw a small line right here, and we'll be sure to point that line away from Q1. And perhaps we can label that electric field E1. Now Q2 is positive, so again, over at point P, we should draw an electric field vector that's pointing away from Q2. We should draw the arrow in this manner, and also the length of the vector should be equal to the length of the vector that we labeled E1. Now, how do we know that? Well, because charges Q1 and Q2 have the same value, and also we can see that point P is exactly situated midway between the two charges. And so we know that the electric field vector should be equal in their size. We go over the charge Q3, which is also positive. So we'll draw an electric field line pointing away from that charge. And we'll label that E3, perhaps getting a little crowded here. And then Q4, being a negative charge, means that we should point the electric field line towards the negative charge that's labeled Q4. So we'll draw a line going in that direction and we'll label it E4. We can next look at the equation that relates the electric field produced by point charges. And in that equation, we have the magnitude of the electric field equaling a constant multiplied by the magnitude of the charge divided by the distance from the charge to the point of interest squared. Now, if we look carefully at the electric fields labeled E1 and E2, we can see that they are produced by charges Q1 and Q2. As stated, Q1 and Q2 have the same amount of charge present on them. So when we look at this formula, the Q value for both E1 and E2 is going to be the same. In addition, the distance value is going to be the same. If we look carefully at the drawing, we can see that point P, which is right here, is the same distance to Q1 as it is to Q2. Because the distance term is going to be the same as well as the charge term, that means that the magnitude of E1 is going to equal the magnitude of E2. Now, if we look at the drawing, we can see that their directions are completely opposite to one another. We have E1 pointing sort of down and to the right, and then we have E2 pointing up and to the left. Because the directions exactly oppose one another, and because the magnitudes are equal, that means that these two vectors are going to cancel each other out. We don't even have to consider them when determining the overall electric field. So we might want to redraw this picture and just take away E2 and E1 because once again, they're going to cancel each other out. So in essence, now we're left with the electric fields that are produced by charges Q3 and Q4. It might be helpful to superimpose what we can call an x-axis right along the line that joins the charges as well as the electric field vectors. 
And by doing that, we could see that E4 points along what we could call the positive x direction. We can arbitrarily say this direction is the positive x. And then E3 points exactly along the negative x direction. This is convenient because when the electric fields lie exactly along the axis, we don't have to worry about any angles or any components of those vectors. Now point P is right there, and we know that the total electric field at point P is going to equal the sum of those two electric field vectors. Now we would have positive E4 because it's pointing in the positive x direction, and then we're going to add that to a negative E3, negative again because it's pointing in the negative x direction. Instead of saying add a negative, we can just say subtract E3. We could then fill in the corresponding expressions using the electric field equation that we had shown earlier. Now notice carefully here when we plugged in for the charge in the numerator for E4, we used Q4. And then the distance for E4 was actually 2D. If you go back to the diagram, you can see that if you measure from Q4 all the way over here to point P, that the distance would be not just 1D, but actually 2Ds. So we've made sure to plug in 2D. For the electric field E3, we've plugged in the charge Q3. And then the distance from charge 3 to point P is just a single D. So we've put 1D in parentheses here. We can now go ahead and plug in Q4, which was a value of negative 12E. And then we'll also plug in the value of Q3, which was positive 3E. Now, because of the absolute value symbols, we can actually just call this negative 12E positive 12E. And then the positive 3E will stay just positive 3E. Next, we can square the denominators. So this denominator will become 4D squared, and over here will just be D squared. And then actually we could reduce this expression. We could divide the denominator and the numerator by four. And then curiously enough, we have one quantity subtracted by the same quantity. And so of course that will equal zero. So in essence, the electric field at point P is going to equal zero newtons per coulomb. So this would be the final answer. Literally all that work for nothing. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and subscribe so you can stay tuned for other videos. Remember, you can send in your own question to the email on the screen, and I'll do my best to answer it.